Jaisu Mata Ji. A very good morning to everyone. Let us all bow down to Shumata Ji. Raise our Mother Kundalini and put Bandhan. Let us recite Shri Ganesh Mantra.
Let us now listen to Shri Mataji's speech. They stay famous, great full moon is called as Sharada Indu, Sharada Indu, that's the name of the Goddess also, Sharada Indu. The moon on the autumn season. Uh, this is the biggest moon and uh, of course not in England, but in India that day the moon is giving the greatest light, see? And it's such a great thing that Guru Nanaka was born on such a date. As you know, in India, people celebrate birthdays according to the dates of the moon, called as Tithi, not as the dates we have here according to the sun. <coughs> they follow. Huh? I'm going to get it. Sure. They time it is for Tinga Teo or Jangi. A chalia predicted. Oh, and <coughs> this great personality was born in Punjab, where people were unaware of God's ways. He was always bothered about the dharma in all his lives, because as you know, he was the primal master. And the primal master is always placed in looking after our void, <coughs> in sustaining us, and giving us a model of an ideal master. And they always took birth, either in the most difficult places like hills and dales and mountains, or they took places which are even more difficult things among people who were horrid and who needed their help. So in India, that time, somehow Punjab was regarded as the place where people did not respect God or traditional Hindu idols or you can say the <coughs> statues that were regarded as the vibrating ones, but they worshipped money even now and they worshipped power and as that time there was a king who was very anxious to convert people to Islamic religion by giving them money. Many were taking to Islam. As a result, the Hindus started hating the Muslims and a big hatred developed among Muslims and Hindus. That's how in those circumstances where there was a quarrel going on between the followers of Muhammad and followers of Hinduism, Muhammad himself took his birth on this earth, though he had decided not to take any more births. He thought that it will solve the problem. Though this incarnation is such that it never dies, even if
they leave the body, they are always around. And they are the ones who perform lots of miracles when any other incarnation comes on this earth. They help, support, guide the seekers to go to the incarnations. So, to celebrate His birthday on such a date is also a myth because He never died. He is eternally living. They never grow and they never die. But His birth is important. Because symbolically, he came on this earth not to propagate any particular type of the void as Muhammad did, or say Moses did, David, Moses, and then before that Abraham, Lao Tse, or Socrates. which followed into a religion, but He came to create amenity, amity we can say, to create understanding, to create unity between us. This was a very big step for Sahaja After that, as you know, He was born again, God knows where, no one knows where He was born, but He appeared as Shirdi Saina. He too said the same thing that to talk ill of any religion is a sin. But these efforts are quite lost, because the people who were Islamic at that time or those who were Hindus are now very great fanatics. So instead of they coming closer and loving each other, they have become fanatics. Though we find that Islam is spreading so fast, Sikhism is spreading very fast too. In America there is a horrible guru, he has started to spread Sikhism is converting all the white skinned people into Sikhs. They are growing their hair and they are also growing their beard <laughs> and wearing a kada and all those five things that were required. At the time of Guru Gobind Singh, when the war had started, they had to wear all these things, which was important. Because war had started and to protect Hindu, Hinduism, or Hindus from the invasion of the Muslims, the fanaticism of the Muslims, they took to this kind of a military stuff. Actually, if you believe in God, nothing can be killed. But I think Guru Gobind thought that he had to take it. In all this prophetic religion, if you see, all the prophets who have spread all the religions, they were always attacked so badly that they had to take to weapons. Even in Islam they had to take to weapons to protect themselves. Now when these people took to weapons, they had some discipline put on the people. Without the discipline, nothing is possible. And very strict discipline was there for the Sikhs. Now today Sikhs, are no more Sikhs, they are just outside and inside they are not. I would not describe all the strictness and discipline they had to go through. But every disciple has to go through a very severe disciplining of himself if he has to become the Guru. There is no doubt about it. It is not that only somebody like me comes and tells you, do this, do that, and next day you forget business. It's a very serious matter, one has to understand. 
you have got your realization through sajo now you have become sajo but still i would say you are not full sajo yogis because every sajo yogi has to be a guru otherwise he is not a sajo <coughs> first of all you are yogis because you get got your realization but yogis of no are of no use you have to be sajo yogis so you were told about all the chakras everything you are told <coughs> about all the problems of kundalini how to cure them everything about it was told to you now you became with that a different type of a race a different type of people who are twice born who are born by the spirit not by the flesh remember that that's a very important point which john has said that you are born by the spirit and not not by the flesh those who are born by the flesh are in flesh but you were born by the spirit that's how you were twice born and when you knew all about the spirit and the kundalini then you are a sadhu but unless and until you become guru you are not a full sadhu so to begin with we must understand that spirit is described as a kala as a phase of more, one phase of but a guru is described as the full moon, purnima guru purnima guru is the full moon it's not just a phase so from one phase you have to go to the stage where you become a complete guru 16 phases there are all together and you have to cross the 16 stages <coughs> to become the guru now how do we do it we have to be extremely objective about it how do we become guru because we have to become gurus no doubt now you cannot just say that mother you give us a tape and we learn by heart and we go to another person say blah 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 same thing whatever i have told you or take my tape and show them that mother this is our mother and she is like this and like that and like that. but they will say all right she might be but what about you sir now sahaja yoga has a very big responsibility which i don't think people understand i wish they could listen to me very intensely and understand so far if you see gurus remained gurus and no disciples became gurus they were still regarded as disciples of a guru whether it was fake or anything they never became gurus themselves so there was no need for them to grow they had to take the name of their guru or right. christ had his disciples mohammed sahab had his own disciple Nanak had his own disciples. Shri Sai Nath had his own disciples. None of them became gurus. But now it is in your lot. Sorry to say that you have to become the guru. It's a privilege, actually. It's a very great privilege to become the guru. And to become the guru, we must learn what we have to do. this also sometimes becomes just a lecture i think so because i have already told you on guru purnima what are the 10 attainments we have to have today all these 16 stages are to be seen how we have to grow into a guru first is we have to have complete discipline put on ourselves nobody has to tell you like mr nick is attacked by everyone no you attack yourself you become mr nick now you have to make this body subservient to you that is first must <coughs> the mastery is that my body can sleep anywhere it can starve itself it can live under any circumstances 
if they are not grudge. Anyway, it should be able to sleep any time, it should be able to keep awake any time. This body is to be mastered. Even if you read Ashtanga Yoga, first thing is mastery of the body, they say. So after realization, the first thing you have to do is to master this body. And is the most difficult thing for Western people. Because the matter is sitting on their spirit. First the spirit has to come, first phase, at least the spirit has to be there. If you have to be the spirit, then the matter of moon has to be covered with that light. In the first phase we have to master our body. So what do we do to master our body? First of all, we must see that what are the things that drain out our bodily must. We must know all the crooks who try to master us. So uh, take you out yourself. I you could move a little, I mean, I have to turn too much to it. Little bit like that. There's a lot of space. Ah. So, I have to first face my body. That first and foremost thing in Sahaja Yoga we learn that we have to respect our body. This is the first principle of respecting our body. Means indulgence is sinful to the body because indulgence gives you a body which is no good. First of all, you must respect your body so that you can master it. If I do not respect you, I cannot master it. So to master the body, first of all respect your body. And to respect your body, you must look after your body very well. But no indulgence. That doesn't mean that you go and stand in the mud or in the rain for hours together or get exposed to make your body absolutely sort of a abode of all the diseases and colds and coughs and things like that. So your poor mother suffers cleaning your Vishuddhi. <coughs> It's like a horse whose neck is down. So you must look after your body by not giving it diseases. Laziness is against it. The persons who are lazy must know that laziness is against your body. Because lazy people will not bother to dress up properly, to cover themselves up properly, look after their body properly, put oil into different screws that they have to massage themselves, look after the body. That's the point. To look after the body, you must give some time because this body is the temple of God. And now you have become the temple, but if the temple is dirty, is sick, is filthy, is unimpressive, is like a stick or like a balloon, Nobody is going to come near it. So try to improve your personality that it has to be a beautiful temple. I mean, I have given you so many tips that I think in my life's time I have not given so many tips, even as good. Because normally people who came to a guru in those days were really, really great seekers. They would hang themselves upside down just to please the Guru for months together. So that was a very different quality, people one, but one or two. Now when you have quantity, quality goes down, I expect. But why not you people take it upon yourself, that will make our quality better. So first of all, trade up your body. You must take some exercise in the morning, I have told you. That people sleep after breakfast, I am told, I was amazed. I mean, this is too much. 
<laughs> God has given you this house as a blessing. To be more alert, to give his light to others instead of that, if the candle is not even flickering, what's the use? So what you have to do is to first of all brush up yourself completely, make your body all right, alert. Actually, at your age, one should not sleep for more than six or seven hours. I tell you, no need. Six and seven hours deep sleep is sufficient. I also, in the night, I sleep about never before eleven. Sometimes at twelve. Yesterday we slept at two o'clock. What about five thirty as usual? So how many three hours sleep? Three and a half hours. Sleep. And just now I slept for about. At the most half an hour, an hour so finished. When you don't have to work, like me, in the sense even when I sleep, I'm work. So to rest your body for such a long time, you make your body sit on your head, and it will be very very difficult for you to be alert. So first of all, body must be looked after. There should be no self-indulgence. I mean, it can go to any extent of self-indulgence. Like people don't keep their rooms clean, their clothes clean. They have no activity as far as all these nonsense. I mean, it is too low, too base to talk about. But it happens. People can go to any base limit. You know, that's the problem. What to do? On this full moon day, one has to realize that on a full moon day. You are overacting. As the moon starts going, the activity starts in the night also. But none of you so far are active in the night except for me. But if you come up, you'll be surprised. Even in your sleep, you'll be active. So first and foremost thing is that you must look after your body. The body should be present. And you should not go with the so-called fashions of the day. It's very important. One should not go with the fashions of the day and take to something that is nonsensical, uh, which is not good for your appearance, which makes you look funny or very fashionable, like a dandy person. We have to wear a dress which is in the center, dignified, good. Now I am told that it is very difficult even to wake up in England. Somebody had told me when I was young that don't wake up an Englishman. <laughs> I haven't tried that even with the bar school. I just tell you. At this time, never in the morning time, because I have been warned that never wake up an Englishman. That is the greatest sin on this earth. <laughs> so why should English be so much addicted to sleep? The whole country is sleeping today. They want more wages, more wages, so that they can sleep more. Eat and drink, drink and eat. In between sleep, this is the three program uh, life, programmed life. <coughs> It was very difficult from the very beginning. I saw the surgeries coming in. That to wake them up was difficult, and these are the same people who were known for punctuality. That they won the war at Waterloo because of punctuality. And they were so punctual that people used to set their watches even in America. They are the same people. Now the other side of it is that they sleep like clouds of food. They used to sleep before also. Must be because this is an old saying that don't wake up an Englishman. But I used to think something else about it. Why it is said? But it is nothing but simple laziness. So. Try to see 
why we sleep so much. Let us recite the three great mantras. Shri Ka 
Thank you, Shumataji, for blessing us with this beautiful meditation. Let us all bow down to Shumataji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Bandhan. Let us meet again tomorrow morning, same time. Jai Shumataji. Ji.